All right, what's going on, everyone? Welcome back, and we got here in this video another projectile motion example problem. And in this problem here, we're throwing balls or water balloons or whatever you want off a building here, and the projectile leaves at point A at an angle of 30 degrees with an unknown velocity. But what we do know is that it lands at the bottom down here, at the bottom of the building, which is 25 meters down, and then across a distance horizontally of 20 meters. What we want to find is the initial velocity of VA, and then what's the maximum height reach of this particle. So the first thing that we're going to do, as with any projectile motion problem, is establish that coordinate system. And here, I'm just going to use a conventional Cartesian coordinate system with x in the horizontal, like this, and then my positive y direction upwards plus y here. And what that's going to let me do is, in, is, is define some initial values. Now the initial values that I, that I want are my initial position and my final position, and then breaking up my velocity vector into components. Now the velocity vector I don't know, but I know that at point A, if I could, VA, the horizontal component of it, or VAX, would be VA cosine of this angle 30 degrees, and VAY would be VA sine of 30 degrees. The initial position here at point A, this x a y a or this initial position is just 0 0 because I put my coordinate system or my reference there and so x a equals 0 and y a equals 0 and I also know my final position here this is where my fine my particle lands and this will be the coordinate x f y f by the coordinate system that I've defined here x f is going to be 20 meters and yf, the final position in the vertical, will be minus 25 meters. All right, now all I got to do is look at the motion in each of my coordinate axes, if you will. So I want to look at my horizontal motion and my vertical motion. Now this horizontal motion here, it's, you know, the, the way we start, you don't have to memorize any equations really, it's just that you have to know that the acceleration of the x is zero. Okay, so there's no horizontal acceleration. And if I integrate this with the, with the appropriate boundary conditions, I'm going to get that this vx is v0x, and that's it. There's no acceleration, so I got nothing else. So it's constant velocity here, which is here, this would just be v, make that a, va cosine of the angle of 30 degrees here and then vy oops not vy it's the xf the position if i integrate again it's just going to be xa plus va t x times t xa is 0 because i put my coordinate system at point a here and so this xf is going to be va cosine of 30 degrees times t now let's look at my vertical motion my acceleration in the y is minus g right here because my gravity points downwards towards earth here and so my my velocity in the y direction vy is vay minus gt and here this if i integrate again if you will this is yf is it going to be yf ya plus vay times t minus one half gt squared and I can substitute some stuff here so I know this vay is you know I know yf I know ya plus va sine of 30 degrees times t minus one half gt squared and what I'm left with here in this is two equations and two unknowns this being one equation and this being my second equation and I know xf I know v, I don't know va I know cosine of 30 I know t, I don't know t so those are two unknowns here I know yf I know ya I don't know va I don't know t but I do know g so that's it and that's two equations two unknowns so if I substitute some numbers here and I'll show you what that looks like here so this xf I believe was 20 there we go this was 20 meters is equal to VA cosine of 30 is square root of 3 over 2 times T and then here YF was minus 25 meters is equal to this was 0 so I'm not even gonna write that in plus VA sine of 30 is 1 half times T minus 1 half and the gravity is 9.81 meters per second squared times T squared and again that's two equations to a known so I can solve for t here so if I solve for t I would get this uh, 20 
meters divided by square root of 3 over 2 times VA and I could substitute that into here and that's going to give me minus 25 meters equals and notice the VA's are going to cancel out so this will be VA times 1 half times 20 meters over square root of 3 over 2 times VA minus 1 half 9.81 meters per second squared times t squared right there and notice the VA's will cancel out and then I can solve for t and this from this equation here I would get when I solve for t this would be this time is going to give me 2.73 seconds right here t equals 2.73 seconds and I will know I can solve from VA using this relationship here and this would tell me that VA is equal to 8.46 meters per second alright so so far in this problem we found the initial velocity or the velocity at point A when the particles lock launched and then we've we even found the time it takes to go from point A to when it lands on the ground over here the the next thing that we need want to do or this problem asks for is is the maximum height reached by this particle so somewhere over here I have this max height this max I'll call this just max height when a projectile motion problem asks for maximum height, really what it's asking for is look at 1D motion in the vertical direction only. And so that means it's focus on these equations right here. Let's focus on these equations right here, right? And one of the things that you know about the maximum height is that when the particle reaches the maximum height over here is that what we know is that that this vertical component of velocity this is right here is this is VAY goes to zero at this point and all you have left here this is VAX if you will all you have is a horizontal component and then right after right afterwards right here right after right here we have that the compo the VAY, you know, the velocity is ta always tangent to the path, and this VA would have a vertical component velocity that's downwards. Whereas over here, the velocity is right here, and again, the vertical component of velocity is still upwards just before it reaches maximum height. So what we want to know is when is this VAY equal to zero? And that's going to be the time it takes to reach this maximum height. So going and looking at this vertical direction, or this vertical 1D motion right here, I'm going to utilize this equation here. I'm going to solve for the time it takes to get a VY of 0, and then just plug it in here to get the maximum height right here. So let's see here. So all I need are those two equations for 1D motion. So here, let's call this 5, and let's call this maximum height. And what we know at the maximum height, we have this velocity for 1D motion. We have this VY is VAY minus GT, which VY is equal to VA sine of 30 degrees minus GT again. And what we know at the maximum height is that this VY is 0. And now I can solve for the time here because my only unknown now is time. And so if I solve for time, T. I will get that T is equal to VA sine of 30 degrees divided by G, which is, I believe this was 8.46 meters per second times 1 half divided by 9.81 meters per second squared. And that just tells me it takes T equal to 0 0.431 seconds to reach the max height. And now if I want to find the position, or the vertical position, or the vertical coordinate here, I call this, oh, let's see, let's get rid of this. It's getting sloppy. So here, this position here, I could call this like x max, y max for max height. Here, all I got to do is plug into the position equation to get the maximum heights. I just plug in for the y max. I would get ym is equal to ya plus vay times t minus one half gt squared. And so I just solve for time. I just substitute for time in here, and I'm trying to find ym. So ym is equal to ya, which we according to my coordinate system was 0, plus VAY, which is uh, 
VA sine of 30 degrees, which is 8.46 meters per second times 1 half times this time of 0.431 seconds minus, I'll continue this down here, minus 1 half 9.81 meters per second squared times 0.431 seconds squared right there. And now I can solve for the maximum height or the position at maximum height. And we get here that the coordinate, the y coordinate at maximum height is 0 0.913 meters. And you're probably thinking, what? The building height is 25 meters. Well, what that really means, that 25, that 0.913 means that this distance right here, this, let's see here, oh, let's do this, get, this drawing's gotten really sloppy, but this pink, this distance right here, this from my reference is 0.913 meters right here. And if I wanted to, if I measured that height from the ground, it'd be 25 plus that 0.913. So it'd be 25.913. So the maximum height reached is 0.913 meters from the reference. Okay, so YM. All right, so hopefully that was helpful. If you want to find the X position here, this XM, then you would just put, substitute that time into the X coordinate equation over here that we saw for previously. This XF, you just substitute that time of 0.431 seconds into it and you would get the X position as well.